It's good to see each one of you here. Uh, we want to make you welcome and uh, make you feel like uh, you're part of the family here uh, at Grundy uh, tonight and tomorrow night and Saturday night and uh, Sunday at our homecoming. Uh, this is the 102nd uh, year since the church started at Grundy. Uh, it started in uh, 1917 and uh, went on for a few years and during the depression uh, they had to close the church and they met up at uh, Mount Mission School for several years and then they reorganized in 1938. Uh, so it's been 81 years uh, since the church reorganized and uh, we celebrate that every year. And uh, we have got three members that are still living uh, that was uh, in that first reorganization meeting uh, in uh, first Sunday of October in 1938, and uh, two of them attend here nearly every Sunday, uh, David uh, Sayers and his sister Jackie, and uh, we're just fortunate and blessed to have them, and uh, one of the ladies that uh, has moved over into the Abingdon area, uh, she said she was going to do her best to be here if she was able on Sunday, so we may have uh, three of our original members uh, after the reorganization in 38. Uh, that's been members of the Grundy Church of Christ for 81 years. Uh, I think that's just amazing, don't you? I think that deserves uh, some applause. <clears throat> we're looking forward to a, a great revival, and we're going to have uh, some history uh, each night uh, before the service starts. And uh, we've got special singing with uh, Brian Goins and uh, River Road. Uh, I forgot. I forget his, the name sometimes. But. Uh, we're certainly glad to have you all, and uh, uh, Brother Curry Allen is going to be doing the preaching, and we'll uh, introduce him here in a little bit. Uh, our opening hymn is number four uh, in your songbook, and uh, you can get you a hymn book, or you can sing off the wall, either one. But I want to read the words uh, that we're going to sing before we sing them. Uh, I think it's just uh, whenever we sing, the Apostle Paul said we need to sing with the understanding. And there's a tremendous message uh, in uh, this song, How Great Thou Art. And I want you to think in your own mind, I don't know what you think of God, uh, who He is or what He is, uh, but as we read these words, uh, try to get into the mind of the songwriter as he tried to imagine how great uh, that our God really is, and it's beyond our comprehension. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds that your hands have made and I see the stars and I hear the rolling thunder, your power throughout the universe is displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great they are. When Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, My God, how great thou art. Man, that's wonderful, isn't it? Let's do the first and last verse.
sing this last verse like we believe he's a great God. Okay? Yeah. Amen. Let's, let's hear everybody sing. To get our revival started off right. That last verse. such a tremendous blessing uh, to be here tonight and to be with uh, my brothers and sisters in the faith. Um, just a few announcements I want to get in, but first of all, let me say uh, as a minister, as an evangelist, as a preacher of the gospel and as a young evangelist, it is uh, such a blessing for me to, to be at a congregation with such rich history. Um, 102 years of history of ups and downs, goods and bads and I feel like I'm a historian after I prepped and prepared myself. So if you want to know anything about the history of the church don't go to the ones who grew up in church. Come to me because I know. <laughs> no, it, it's a blessing to be here. It's an honor to serve alongside Brother Dennis and the elders here. And I'm just looking forward to seeing what God continues to do here with the Grundy Church of Christ. 102 years to come. Lord willing. All right, just a few announcements. Um, the Grundy Bible Institute fall semester classes. We know how rich the Grundy Bible Institute. 1956 it started. And uh, with a man's vision, with um, many preachers who came together and decided, hey, we need to train up our brothers uh, that's within our congregations. And we need to get them started. And uh, what I love about it is the focus was on the blue-collar, hard-working men who didn't have the opportunity to go to a Bible college. And I, and I appreciate that um, because your blue-collar, hard-working men, that's where it's at. And uh, I pre that's the backbone of America to me yeah. is the hard-working men. But with that being said... Um, Fall semester starts October 17th, and our theme this semester is the politically correct. And so it's going to be fun, let me tell you. Some of, my, some of Jim's already shaking his head. It's like, oh, no, brother. But it, we're, t we're going to tackle some, some tough topics and issues um, within uh, how our culture and society kind of thinks how things should be. And we're going to get into the scriptures and try to make it applicable and, and relate it. 
and, and, and try to see what, what God's really saying about these issues. So we're going to be tackling issues such as marriage, um, church discipline, judgment, uh, Jesus being the politically incorrect evangelist that he was. So make plans. It's every Thursday, 7 uh, 6 p.m. Uh, every Thursday. It's an hour and a half class. This is a good opportunity uh, to come and, and grow and fellowship and, and learn. And also, uh, church family, Grundy Church of Christ family, uh, make sure you sign up, if you haven't, with the homecoming preparation meal that we have this Sunday. And we'll need help in the kitchen, those who can. Uh, make plans for that. And uh, we have a fall festival October the 19th. So Granny Church of Christ family, we have a sign-up sheet. Make sure you sign up uh, on a station or any way that you can in, in, uh, participate in that event. Um, with that being said, welcome to the Grundy Church of Christ again. We love you all. We have a rich history here, and we want you to feel like you're part of family. And uh, Sunday, we got a big announcement that we're going to announce to the church family. It's something that Dennis and myself and the elders have prayed, planned, and prepped. And so the, our visitors, if you can be here homecoming day, we got a big announcement. We're going to let it loose, drop the curtain, if you will, drop the mic. So if you can, make plans to be here for that. Love you guys. Enjoy tonight. Looking forward to this week. Brother Kerry making the trip down here. And I appreciate him and all, the, all these men who are in the ministry. They're such an influence to me. God bless you. Thank you, Brad. We've got a, a couple problems with uh, Brandon as our youth minister and uh, <laughs> associate minister. Uh, we, we need to kind of get him over being shy. Uh, <laughs> and uh, if we can find something to get him more excited, uh, uh, he's going to work out fine if we can just get him a little bit more excited. And, uh, uh, Brandon, we, we really appreciate you, bud. And he's... Uh, uh, he's took a tremendous uh, load of work uh, off of me in the past few months, and uh, he's done a tremendous amount of work on our homecoming. Uh, you need to be here and take advantage of it every night, and especially Sunday with uh, all the history and all the pictures that we have. Uh, this is going to be, a, we want it to be a great, great homecoming. Uh, tonight, uh, we have a lot of special needs uh, amongst our people here, uh, serious, serious matters that we need to pray about. Uh, Sister Carol Coleman uh, had her biopsy Monday, and uh, she's got to go back to uh, Winston-Salem and start her treatments again uh, this coming Monday. So they'll be leaving on Sunday. Uh, please keep her uh, in your prayers and uh, pray that everything goes good. Uh, Sister... Uh, Mary Kay Owens uh, had her biopsy yesterday, and she is waiting on the results. Uh, hopefully everything turns out well there. Uh, please remember her. Angie Daniels that had uh, heart surgery, open heart surgery, four bypasses Monday. Uh, she has been really, really sick. Uh, she had another heart attack while they was preparing her for surgery. Uh, after surgery was over, about 1 o'clock in the morning, uh, she coded on them and they, they got her revived, and today is the first day that she's been able to walk uh, since her surgery. Uh, Sonja Horn, that had surgery just uh, three hours before Angie, uh, she was released from the hospital today. She's just doing great, so uh, continue to keep uh, them in your prayers. Uh, Sister Kim Bandy, uh, that we baptized here about maybe four weeks ago, she fell this afternoon and broke her arm just above her elbow, and uh, broke it completely in two, and she's in the ER at uh, Buckhannon General, just left up there a while ago, and they're moving her to Pikeville in the morning, or moving her tonight, and probably do surgery in the morning, uh, put in pins and plates. Also, Irene Fuller, uh, Richard Lee's wife, Tracy, her mother was took to ER last night uh, while we was here uh, at uh, Bible study, and prayer meeting, and they moved her on to Pikeville, and she is down there, so uh, please keep her in your prayers. Uh, anybody else that we need to make special mention of? We've got a whole host of people that uh, we need to pray for, but especially those. Anybody? 
Sue? Sue Glaster? No, we'll put Sue on our too. Okay. And uh, uh, Ryan, Jeanette Higgins. Okay. She's in the hospital and she's under hospice care. Okay, Jeanette Higgins. And her, uh, that's your first cousin, I guess Sue is, isn't she? Yeah. Sue uh, has been diagnosed with cancer last week. Sue Lester, uh, her dad was an elder at uh, uh, Blackie Church of Christ for many, many years. Uh, so uh, please keep Sue in your prayers. Anybody else? Wanda Joe, Wanda Joe Cooper. And uh, Charlie uh, told me earlier, uh, don't know exactly when her surgery is going to be, uh, but uh, she is uh, uh, she's on antibiotics right now to try to clear up some infection. And as soon as they can get that cleared up, uh, they're going to do her uh, surgery. She's going to have heart surgery. She's got to repair an aneurysm and work on a valve. And a very, very serious surgery. As all you people here at Grundy, we've been talking about that for weeks. Uh, so you, you just pray that they're able to do it, and uh, she does well from it. Anyone else? Mike Dameron. Mike Dameron. How's he doing? He's doing all right. Okay. He's just He had surgery this past week as well. Uh, so uh, remember him. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine, when I worked with years ago, had a stroke. I heard him talk. He passed away with a kid named Charlie Beasley. Charlie Beasley? Beasley from up above Garden. Charlie Beasley family. I know that was Janet. Where's Janet? There she is. Uh, Janet is a school teacher, and she's one of our teachers here. Uh, works with our youth and uh, does a fantastic job. And uh, she is constantly reminding us uh, of our children uh, and the importance of the school system, and uh, pray for our kids' safety and all that. Uh, Janet, we appreciate you too. Uh, so uh, keep all of our school children in your prayers. Where's she at, Terry? In New Orleans. Okay. Well, I don't guess I'll go down there tomorrow. <laughs> if she's Pikeville or Johnson City, I could probably make it. We're going to sing number 433, a Sweet Hour Prayer. Uh, yes, sir. Say that name again. Leanne Bird. Meredith. How did I get Leanne out of that? Okay, uh, Jerry's, Jerry's mom that passed away, and we've mentioned that since the weekend. Uh, they're traveled down there, and they're having her funeral service tomorrow. And then Jerry will be traveling back uh, to begin the prayer clinic uh, on Tuesday. So uh, keep all of them uh, in your prayers. And uh, Jerry's dad is, I believe he said, 90 years old. Uh, and uh, he told me how long they'd been married, but it's a long time. Uh, 54 64. Uh, keep, keep him in your prayers as well. Uh, that's, uh, I've never lost a, uh, a mate, uh, but that is devastating. I've seen a lot of people that have, and uh, it's, it's really hard. So uh, please keep uh, him in your prayers especially. Number 433, Sweet Hour of Prayer. We'll sing both verses. On that last verse, we'll ask uh, one of our elders, uh, Brother Roger Blankenship, if he would, to Lead us in prayer for these that we mentioned. Ask God's blessing on our revival uh, through the rest of the week.
especially Heavenly Father, we want to certainly remember Carol that she uh, goes back Sunday and for about a 30 day stay. We just pray, Heavenly Father, your blessings upon her that they can help her situation. And uh, uh, Wanda Joe, when she faces this surgery, has been such a great servant for so many years in so many areas of this county. Certainly pray more blessings upon her. And Mary Kay, as she waits on this biopsy, we just pray that that would come out in a good positive way. And her little young sister, Kim, that we just left the hospital with just a few uh, moments ago but with this broken bone. And she has husband health issues, Heavenly Father. You know them, but she also has small children. So we just pray that she would bless her, that that uh, surgery could be a success. And uh, she wouldn't worry, Heavenly Father. She certainly worries a lot. And we just pray for blessings from her. And, and each name, Heavenly Father, uh, again, each name that was mentioned from this audience, we pray your richest blessings on each one of them. If it be your will, Heavenly Father, that if each one, that's not asking too much from you, Heavenly Father, each one of them, condition might improve. That as Brother Dennis mentioned, we do ask a special blessing upon Jerry, bless him as he's uh, down with his dad, and, and we just pray that that would go well and, and he would be blessed with a safe trip back to the mountains. And again, as I already prayed, we, we certainly ask your blessings upon my remain of our service and I look forward to the singers and carry tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, before our singers come, uh, let me find out how many congregations we got with us tonight. Uh, we've got some folks from Van Sant. Uh, we've got folks from Oak Grove. Uh, we've got folks from Big Branch. Who, who you got with you, Stanley? You, will you tell us, tell us who she is? That's their first granddaughter, and and Charlie's or Charlie, uh, Stanley is not proud of his granddaughter at all. Uh, he he needs some of the same thing that we need to give Brandon to get him more excited about that. So uh, we're glad you're here, and we're just tickled to death that uh, that you've got this new grandbaby. Uh, Elkhorn City, uh, we've got Elkhorn Crossview. Uh, Flatwoods, uh, the preacher up at Flatwoods. Uh, Poplar Creek is here. Uh, anybody else? Blackie. Blackie. I see you, Rusty. I'm sorry. <laughs> Furls Creek. I heard somebody else. East Point. Anybody here from Grundy? <laughs> Good to have you folks from Grundy. Uh, we sure appreciate you all coming out. Uh, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's 11 congregations. Now, uh, would all the preachers please stand up? Uh, Curry. That's 12 congregations. Curry, where are you? what congregation are you going? Hillsburg. Okay. You all just stay standing just a minute. We're going to take up an offer. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, folks, keep these men in your prayers. Uh, it's, uh, these are important men. Uh, the elders in the church and the local congregation are important men. Uh, ministers are important in the time that we're living in and the situation that's going on in our world. Uh, pray for these men that they'll stay firm on the Word of God and uh, declare His Word without fear. And they'll do it in love. And they'll do it in a way to draw people uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ. You all can be seated. Thank you. At this time, uh, Brian Goins and River Road is going to uh, come and sing for us. Uh, one more announcement. Uh, the David Melton family is going to be at uh, Elkhorn City Church of Christ on October the 10th uh, through the 13th. 
Uh, so if you get a chance to go down and share with them uh, during their revival meeting, and uh, David and uh, his family is going to be here at Grundy on the 27th on a Sunday. Uh, they're just wonderful singers. Uh, go and support them and go down and support the Elkhorn City Church. Say that again. Nidra, oh, uh, David's mother. Yeah, his okay. Husband away. Okay. Keep keep that family in prayer. Come on, Brian Goins and River Road. <laughs> yep. We'll, we'll be announcing that. that you'd rather be on a Thursday night? I can't either. I can't think of anywhere else I'd rather be gathered with people who love the Lord, who want to hear the, the message of, of God from Brother Kerry, that that's God has laid on his mind and his heart to proclaim to us tonight, tomorrow night, Saturday and Sunday morning. Uh, keep him in your prayer that he can recall the things he studied. Uh, keep us in your prayers that we can remember the words to sing. So uh, we'll... Uh, do a few songs here you might know, some you may, some you may not. We want you to sing along with us if you do know them because we're not, we're not here just to sing to y'all, we're here to sing to the Lord, okay? So we're going to do this, the first one here, uh, you'll probably know. Hank Williams wrote this song, a little bit of a song called I Saw the Light. Oh, 
we'll stay right there in that same key, guys. And uh, this next song is, uh, I, I like singing this song. You know, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, it talks about the, the wide and the narrow gates. It says, broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there will be many who find it. But it also says that straight is the way and narrow is the way that leads to life. And there will be few who find it. And us here tonight, I can look around and see that you are the few some of the few that's going to find that way one of these days. But there may be somebody here tonight who doesn't know how to get there. That's right. And we're here tonight to, to teach you, to yeah. tell you how to get that way. And that's only by following God's plan of salvation that He's laid out in His Word, following God's rules. So we're going to, I want to sing this song here for you, and I hope you enjoy it. Right, this next song I want y'all to help us out because I want y'all to sing too and Glenn I don't know if you can find this for the PowerPoint or not but maybe you can find it real quick uh, power in the blood I love singing that song because there was power in the blood because the blood the blood shedding of Jesus Christ is what set us free from our sins and you can only contact that blood of Jesus Christ in the watery grave of baptism and there's no other way that you can contact that blood and he shed it for us freely because of his love and mercy and grace for us. And so uh, we want you to sing this song. We're going to do it in G. And uh, maybe Glenn can find it, hopefully. I'm not sure what number it is in the book. Maybe somebody can, huh? 191, Glenn. Maybe you can find it. Real quick while he's finding that, I'll tell you who these guys are. Um, over here to my right, your left, uh, gentleman has uh, been associated with our family for a long time. He's played. Uh, around around the, the country, several several places uh, for a lot of years. Uh, he he used to play with a group called Black Diamond. Uh, he played with uh, a, a time on some recordings for uh, Randy Waller and the Country Gentleman. He's played uh, several several places, but he most enjoys playing for the Jesus. Lord. And and he has his own own ministry, Eddie Mars Singing Ministries. And uh, this is Mr. Eddie Mars from Princeton, West Virginia. gentleman behind me is no stranger to some of you. Some of you know him. Some of you 
may know him, just not claim to, who knows. But uh, he's a very good friend of mine I, I've gotten acquainted with since moving to Kentucky. And I've been in Kentucky about seven years, and since I moved down there, got acquainted with him through uh, Kevin Prater and, and my Uncle Melvin. Uh, he was what a guy. immersed into Christ at the Elkhorn City Church of Christ years ago, I think, and uh, I'm glad to have yeah. him here. He's from right outside of Pikeville and Shelby Anna. This is Cole Spears. I don't know if I have to introduce him, but I will because he's he's kind of like he's been around a long time, you know. He's he's probably forgot more than I'll ever know. So, uh, but I have a lot of respect for my my father. I have a I love him. Uh, he's played with the Goins brothers for a lot of years, <clears throat> and he and my uncle Colin, my uncle Harold played the prayer clinic, and they've done a lot of things for a lot of years. And I'm, I'm blessed with the opportunity to be able to play with my dad. Uh, he's had some health problems in the past, but I'll tell you, six months ago he was diagnosed with having a dark circle around his good eye. He has one good eye, and he was diagnosed with a dark circle around his eye. So we, we started a prayer chain. Everybody started praying for dad. So several months later he goes to Roanoke, Virginia to an eye specialist. The eye specialist looks at his eye and says he can see nothing. So the power of prayer works. Amen. Thank goodness for the power of prayer. And so this is my dad from Bluefield, West Virginia, Jim Goins. And I don't, y'all know me. I've been here several times. Ain't no need to introduce me. Now. My name's Brian. I live in Pikeville, and we're just so glad to be here. And I tell you what, y'all been sitting a little while. I can tell you're, you're kind of getting comfortable. I don't want you to get comfortable. So I want you to stand up if you're able, and I want you just all to sing. Whatever verses are on the screen of there's power in the blood. Ready, guys? Ready you are. Dad, I'm going to let you sing a song here, and then we're going to close out with an acapella, and Brother Kerry's going to preach. Uh, let's do Life's Railway to Heaven. Can you do that one for me? Y'all know Life's Railway to Heaven? If you know it, sing along with me, because I need all the help I can get. Amen. All right, Eddie. <laughs>
successful from the grave to the grave. But the curve the hills of Allen never falter, never fall. Keep your hands. say this joke and I don't mean it bad but I'll tell you when I was a kid you know I, he had to hold my hand change my diapers and stuff when I crossed the street well now the roles were getting reversed <laughs> oh, Lord. except the diaper part I tell him for a man that's <laughs> had seven bypasses and six or four stents prostate cancer and lost man. both hearings and one eye I'm doing pretty good I think. amen <laughs> all right we're going to do this song here, Daddy, in the key A. Each day I'll do, each day I'll do, a golden deed, a golden deed, by helping those, by helping those who, are in need. who are in need. My life on earth, my life on earth, is but a span, is but a span, and so I'll do, and so I'll do the, the best, best I can, can, the best I can. can. Last evening sun, last evening sun, is sinking low, is sinking low. A few more days, a few more days, and I must go, and, and I must go, go to meet the deed, to meet the deed that I have done, that I have done. Where there will be, where there will be no setting sun, no setting sun. 
While going down, while going down, life's weary low. Life's weary road. I try to live. I try to live. Some travel slow. Some travel slow. I turn to turn. I'll try to turn. The night today. The night today. Make flowers bloom. Make flowers bloom along the way. Along the way. Life's evening sun, life's evening sun, is sinking low, is sinking low. A few more days, a few more days, and I must go, and I must go to meet the deeds that I have done, that I have done. Where there will be, where there will be no, no setting sun, no setting sun. Give them another hand clap. Amen. Amen. I got to know Brother Brian uh, when Megan and I were at the uh, Co-Run Church of Christ. I can remember when I first uh, met Brother Brian. Um, didn't know what to think or what to expect. Uh, he was, still yeah, we're still <laughs> friends, brother. Still going strong. I appreciate Brother Brian. He does preach on occasion, and I uh, appreciate him. He just doesn't sing for the Lord. He most importantly preaches for the Lord. And I'm, I'm thankful for Brother Brian and, and these men who, who are with him. Brother Jim, you're the man. <laughs> you're the man. I love the Lord. Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. Say it loud and proud is what I got to say. Brother Glenn. Brother Glenn, too. I appreciate this man, too. He's going to do something, sing or something. <laughs> Um, it's an honor to uh, introduce uh, Brother Kerry Allen. Um, I've gotten to see him and hear him and meet with him over the years since I became a Christian at Hillsboro and went to a workshop and get to talk with him and, and to actually get to just be with him now and, and be with him through this revival meeting. It's such a blessing. Um, you know, any time that I have the opportunity to sit down with these men who've been in the ministry for a very long time and seen a lot of things. Uh, it's always a great honor to sit down with these men and get to know them and what they've been through. Because I can guarantee you, they've been through it. And I can learn from it, and I'm thankful for that. Uh, Brother Kerry, if you do not know, uh, many of you may know when, way back when at Bluefield College of Evangelism, brother. And uh, speaking of that, we, got, we actually have an old certificate from 1998 that you signed of, of our support way back when, when uh, Grundy was supporting the Bluefield College of Evangelism. But now, uh, Brother Kerry, he's been with Person to Person Ministries, is it 25 years? 21. <laughs> I'm adding to you, brother. Uh, 21 years, Person to Person Ministries. Um, if you're not familiar, familiar with Restoration Acres, Hillsboro Family Camp, uh, they play a big part with that family camp. It's uh, a great family camp, and I would encourage anyone who could go make plans for next summer. I'm sure Brother Kerry will fill you in and give you more information about that. Um, and Kerry will tell you a little bit more, but Kerry just recently took a position with Louisville Bible College, and he'll expound more on that as the pre new president of Louisville Bible College, and he'll be starting that part-time uh, in the new year. And so... Um, it's an honor to have him, his endeavor and work in the kingdom, his knowledge and his wisdom of God's word. So, Brother Kerry, if you would, come on up, brother, get behind this pulpit and preach the what? The word. Uh, Brother Brandon, I remember when I first met Brian, too, and he was just out of diapers. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you were just out of diapers when I first met you. <laughs> I was trying to remember what year, I don't, I don't remember what year you were born. 81. 81, yeah, he was, just a, he was just a little kid when I first moved to Bluefield. And, uh, 
And uh, it's, been, it's been exciting for me to see him grow up and mature in the Lord. And uh, thank you for what you did and the fellows who are with you tonight. It's a privilege for me to be back here at the Grundy Church of Christ. Thank you for allowing me to come back. But, uh, folks, I'm privileged to get to be on the road preaching and teaching about 40 weeks a year. And uh, everywhere I go when I uh, preach revivals, uh, it was something I learned when I was just a youngster. And I share it and repeat it if I go back to a place I've been before. But there are two keys to a great revival. First of all, we have to work as though everything depended upon us. But secondly, we have to pray as though it depended upon God. And so I want to really encourage you here this week that you would do everything that you could possibly do to make this a great revival. But pray God like you have never prayed Him to send a great revival. We need revival in our land. We need revival in the Lord's church. Pray the Lord. Send a great revival. Let's pray. Father, we praise you for being the only true God. And a lot of people set a lot of things up in their minds and in their lives as though that thing was God. But we know there's only one that really is God. And Father, you're so high, you're so far beyond us that we can't even come to you on our own merit. But we come to you through Jesus Christ. And Father, we praise you for sending him to this earth that he might save us from our sins, that he would open the access that we have to you and that, Father, he would give us the promise that he would come and take us and where he is, we can be also and we'll be with your presence forever and ever. Tonight I pray that that promise would really be real. That all of us would see it and hear it as we never have before. And I pray that we'll do what we need to do to claim that promise. Thank you for what we've shared, the songs that we've sung, the songs that we've heard sung. Thank you, God, for the prayers. You've listened to our prayers. You answer our prayers. Now, God, we want to give this time of preaching to you. Please use it to feed our spirits, to instruct us on godliness and righteousness. Oh, dear God, lift up Jesus through the word tonight. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Years ago, when video recorders were first becoming portable and a person could carry them and record their life activities. There was a fellow who, uh, by vocation, he was a professional photographer. But his real passion in life was skydiving. And as those video recorders became small and portable, this man then was able to combine his life's vocation with his life's passion, and that is that he could actually go skydiving and he could record, video record, that activity. One day he got uh, several of his friends together and they went out skydiving and he was so excited that he was going to be able to record them jumping out of the plane and be able to get them as they would free fall for a while and then the chutes would open and you could catch the gentle descent. The story was actually a news story and the story of the news was this. That that man got so excited about recording these friends jumping out of the airplane and catching all of that action that when it actually came time for him to make his jump. He was so excited that he had forgotten to strap on 
his parachute. Brothers and sisters, tonight I believe in a spiritual way that there are many people who believe in Christ and are excited about heaven to the point that they have seemingly forgotten to strap on their spiritual parachute. I'd like for us to open our Bibles tonight to the book of 2 Peter. The book of 2 Peter. We're just going to start with the very first verse of 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 1. I ask you to try to follow along the best you can. We're going to read uh, several verses here. We're going to read down through verse 11. And so just try to follow along the best you can. 2 Peter chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. 1. Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins." Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, I'm sure that I read through this passage in such a manner that it was so quick and so casual that it was really hard to pick up on what all Peter was trying to write about here. It was a rather lengthy section of scripture and there was just no time to ponder over it, to meditate upon it. And yet what I would have us to understand tonight is that there's a lot of confusion in our world. Now, I don't say this lightly. I don't say this trying to be humorous in any way, nor do I say it in any way trying to be put downish or condescending. But I never in my life would have imagined that in the United States of America that we would ever reach a point that we are so confused we don't even know whether we're a girl or a boy. But that is how confused our society is tonight. And so when it comes to the confusion in our land, folks, it's not just society that is so culturally confused. When it even comes to the spiritual realm, there is as much confusion in our land tonight as there is in the culture in general. And when we read this passage of Scripture, if we had time to go through it and break it down into its smallest parts, we would find that Peter would say among many things, one of the things that he would say is the Christian faith is really quite simple. 
God has done his part. We must do ours. Now I want you to ponder that. I want you to think about that and meditate on it. And we're going to try then to apply that in our preaching. God has done his part. Now, Peter says that that's not just some pie in the sky, wishful thinking idea that someone concocted to make us psychologically feel better about ourselves. It's not just some dream that someone conjured up in their mind and said, oh, I want to give you some hope, and the hope I want to give you is, oh, there's a better life coming because God has done something for us. Brothers and sisters, what we read in this passage of Scripture tonight is we can be sure that the hope that we have for a better life forever and ever, a life that goes beyond time, a life that goes beyond the physical realm, there really is a life with God and hope to be with God forever and ever because of what God has done for us. Now right here in these few verses that we read, we see that Peter says, first of all, that the person of the Lord has called us. He said that we were called by his glory and his virtue. God has called us to himself. Years and years ago, when one of the Roosevelts was president of the United States, it was a much different time than it is today. It had been a particularly stressful time in President Roosevelt's presidency and It came a late weekend in May, and the president actually wanted to just do a getaway. And so he he instructed his driver then to take him, and they went out to the mountains of western Pennsylvania. I don't know how familiar you are with that part of the country, but in my estimation, that's just a beautiful, beautiful part of the country. You all here can relate with it quite well with your mountains uh, that that you're so accustomed to. And it's just one of those picturesque settings that they happened on, happened to be on the Lord's Day morning. And there was a mountain on one side and a mountain on the other and nestled in between the two mountains was a valley. And in that valley was a white framed church building. I said it was the Lord's Day morning and the president, he said to the driver just to stop and the president chose to drop into that little white frame building and worship with those people who had assembled there. That's what I said nowadays, they couldn't do it just like that. It'd be, be totally different. Well, you can imagine the buzz that circulated through that rural community when the president had come to worship there. But that particular spring had been a very wet spring and the farmers were far behind in getting their crops planted. And so a lot of those farmers on that particular Lord's Day had chosen to be out in the field getting the crops planted rather than being in at the assembly of the saints. As the news of the president had circulated through the community and these farmers would see the old country preacher, one by one they would apologize to him saying, I'm sorry that I wasn't there when the president was there. I don't know if that preacher had some special gift of wisdom or what, but he said to each of those farmers, he said, there's one greater than the president here every Lord's Day. And brothers and sisters, I sometimes wonder tonight, do we really get how great our God is? Many of us grew up on that song that we sang here tonight, How Great Thou Art, How Great Thou Art. I didn't know you were going to sing that. I didn't know you were going to go through those words. But I said, well, it's in my sermon, so I'm going to go ahead and use it anyway. But, but, but the song says, Oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, 
my Savior, God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior, God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think, that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die. I scarce can take it in that on the cross, my birth, gladly bearing, he bled and died. To take away my sin. Amen. Then sings my soul. Amen. My Savior, God, to thee. Amen. How great thou art. How great thou art. You know, some of our younger people sing it in a more contemporary way with the words of a song that simply says, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great, how great is our God. And dear church tonight, do we really get how great our God is? And here we understand from these words of Peter that that one who is higher than the highest, who is mightier than the mightiest, who is nobler than the noblest, that one who transcends time, who goes beyond the, the universe, that one who knows no day, he knows no night, he is light, he is love, he is Lord, he is everything that is good, that is holy, that is true, that is just. He has called us Amen. to himself. Amen. And like one songwriter wrote several years ago, the world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. Because God has done his part. None of us stumbled into Christianity. None of us will one day wake up and find ourselves inside the walls of Jasper we won't find ourselves walking on the golden street. We won't find ourselves in the presence of the throne of God Almighty and the presence of the holy angels by accident. But when we pass through those gates of pearl and when we enter that land where we never grow old, it will be because, be because through Christ, God has called us to him. As a matter of fact, Jesus' own words were these. Come unto me. Come unto me. God has done his part. The person of the Lord has called. But God has done his part according to Peter in that he said, it's not just the person of the Lord has called us. He says the power of the Lord has transformed us. Now, um, I, I, like, I like music. You guys really ministered to me tonight. And when I say like music, I, I really need to clarify that. Music ministers to me. Amen. And so when I'm saying that I like music, what I'm saying is... Music is a tool that God has given certain people that really brings me closer to Him. 
And uh, you know, the, the, the scriptures talk about that we're to teach and admonish one another through psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And I'm one of those people that I can really grow through that. It really does minister to me. And you guys just were used tonight to really minister to me. And uh, wow, I just, uh, I just thought, why in the world am I here to preach? You guys just, you guys just, I'm, but I know it's through the foolishness of the message preached. So we need preaching too. And, uh, but it really, really, really ministered to me. But there was a song that was popular several years ago, a Southern gospel song, and it said, I'm not, I ain't what I want to be, ain't what I ought to be, but thank God I'm not what I was. And I, I really would that tonight that we would really understand that. I'm not what I want to be, I'm not what I ought to be, but thank God I'm not what I was. You see, Christianity is a growth process. Jesus meant what he said, and he said what he meant when he said, unless one is born again, he won't even see the kingdom. He meant what he said, and he said what he meant when he said, except one is born of water and the Spirit, he will not enter the kingdom. But you see, there's so much there in those couple of verses that we could actually preach almost an entire series of revival services just on those few words from Jesus. We find the means of rebirth. We find the, 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 the need for rebirth. We'd have to unpackage what does it mean to be born again. Jesus said what he meant and he meant what he said. And one of the leaders of Israel, the very people of God, he couldn't grasp what it was that Jesus was saying at, at that time. And you think I can stand up here tonight and just quote those words of Jesus and that we understand fully and totally what it was that Jesus said? We could preach an entire revival series on those few words. But what we need to understand is though he said that Christianity is a birth process and the means of that new birth is by being baptized in water, being filled with the Spirit of God and then we grow and we grow and we grow and we grow into the likeness of Christ. I was privileged to be reared in a Christian home and all I've ever known in my life is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And brothers and sisters, I tell you, I know a whole lot more about Christ today than I did that night that I was immersed into Christ in 1963. I know a lot more about the words of Scripture than I did when I was a newborn Christian. That night I came up from the baptismal waters. There are things I understand that I didn't even know what those words meant when I was younger in my faith. There are thoughts tonight that I, I, I have in my mind about attitudes and actions of life. I wouldn't have had those thoughts before because I hadn't grown into that knowledge and that likeness of Christ. And thank God, I'm still not what I want to be. I'm still not all I ought to be. But thank God, I'm not what I was. Thank God that tonight... I was immersed into Christ. My sins were taken away. His spirit did come and live in me. He adopted me as his child. He claimed me as his very own. He added me to his church. He wrote my name in the Lamb's book of life. And I might not be what I want to be. I might not be what I ought to be. But thank God I'm not what I was. And that's what this scripture tells us tonight. The person of the Lord has called us, but the power of the Lord has transformed us by his exceeding and abundant promises. He has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. We don't have to stay shackled in those habits that, 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 that chain us. We don't have to stay lost in the traps of our childhood or the environment that we grew up in. Tonight we have the living God who has done his part. He has given to us everything we need for life and godliness. 
And we find there's one other thing. You didn't move this one there, Glenn. <laughs> I'm not laughing, I'm scared to death. <laughs> but we find there's one other thing in that passage about what God has done. He said that, have you got it yet? First of all, the person of the Lord has called us. The power of the Lord transforms us. But the promises of the Lord protect us. Amen. Whereby he has given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises. These promises protect us. Amen. So that, wow, when you think about the promises of God, why would you want to give up a Christian life to enjoy the pleasures of this world for a season when you could have the promise of God's heaven forever and ever 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 and ever. And ever. Just doesn't make sense, does it? I might take my jacket off. A while ago I was freezing. I just needed to start preaching earlier. When I was a kid, I loved to go to a Christian youth camp and uh, we'd sing a collection of choruses put together, I think they call that a medley of songs. And, uh, and man, it went something like this. It said, every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line. All the blessings of his love divine Every promise in the book is mine, 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 mine. Jesus is mine. Mine when I'm weary, mine when I'm cheery. Mine, 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 mine. Jesus is mine. Jesus is always wonderful, wonderful. Jesus is to me. Counselor, Prince of Peace, mighty God is he. Saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer. Praise his name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord, he is the mighty king, master of everything. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord, he's the great shepherd, the rock of all ages. Almighty God is he. Bow down before him. Love and adore him. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord, will love me forever, and from him no power of evil can sever. He gave his life to ransom my soul. Now I belong to him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me, not for the years of time alone, but for eternity, every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line. All the blessings of his love divine, every promise in the book is mine. Yeah. Wow. And somebody says, that's not true. I said, say what? I said, well, the Bible promises hell. And I want to tell you all something. If I won't do what God says to, way, to do the way God says to do it, that promise is mine too. Every promise in the book is mine. And when we think about the promises... You ever had a tough time? You ever had a tough time? It was on her, I think it was on her, I can't remember what was on the screen. Brother Dennis, you talked, to, you talked about something earlier tonight. <laughs> things, were, things were different than they used to be. Well, here's mine. I can live with my arthritis. My dentures fit just fine. I can see through my bifocals. But oh, how I miss my mind. <laughs> uh, 
And, and this job, this, uh, where's Brandon? Brandon, back there in the back 40. This transition I'm making with my job, I was, I was supposed to be retiring. And uh, when I first gave my resignation to, letter to the trustees at person to person, I, I, I reached retirement age and I thought it was time for me to get out of the way, you know. And now I don't know what I'm doing going over there to Louisville to work with the school, except we need preachers. We need preachers. We need preachers. And if God's going to allow me to work with that, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But, uh, but I tell you, that's, uh, that, uh, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I can't remember anything. I can't remember anything. And, uh, and uh, who am I? But I think it was on the, script, on the screen here tonight, but it might not have been because the Bible said when the church began on Pentecost, said your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. <laughs> I might have been dreaming. But I think somewhere it had Philippians 4.13 up there on the screen. Now let me get you back where we were. Ever had any tough times? Yeah. Isn't this a great promise? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Isn't that a great promise? And you know what he had said just a few verses, he, Paul, you know what he had said just a few verses before that? He said, be anxious over nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Isn't that a great promise? Have anybody ever messed up in your life? I'm going to step down here so we'll quit. Has anybody ever really messed up in your life? And I mean, you know you failed God and you've failed people. I mean, you have really messed up. We've all been there. Maybe it was an angry word you said. Maybe it was something you did. That, why did you ever do that? You ever really messed up? How about this promise? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive them. That was written to Christians. Isn't that a great promise? And how about this one? My God will supply all your needs. I don't know if we've ever heard it. He's not just talking money. He says, my God shall supply all your needs. I don't want to come unbuttoned, and I sure want it loose. I don't know what your need is tonight, but I heard a lot of prayer requests. And yet I really was sitting there in my mind, Brother Dennis. I was sitting right here, and you were going through the prayer requests, and they were coming from all across this room. And brother, I tell you, I had this one I could give you. 
I had this one I could give you. And I had this one I could give you. And I had a whole lot more. And I'm sitting there thinking, you know, those things are just as important as these. That, and I'm sure this brother, he was sitting there thinking he had, Jim, you've got yours. Brian, you had yours. Rusty, you, every one of us. I want to tell you tonight, God has promised to supply all, all our needs. The Christian faith is quite simple. God has done his part. But wait a minute, and I'm going to close because it's quitting time. Verse 5 said, for this very reason, that we have God has done his part and this heaven is real. He said, now for that very reason, giving all diligence. Now, brothers and sisters, if the Bible says all, how much does the Bible mean? It doesn't mean most of it. He don't mean some of it. He means all. And he says, you give in all diligence. One translation translated it like this. You make every effort giving all diligence. You add to your faith. You see, God has done his part we must do ours. <laughs> Are you doing your part? Are you doing your part? Or are you jumping out of the airplane without the parachute. God's done his part. And you believe it. But the only thing that changed about you when you got baptized was your clothes, then there wasn't nothing that happened. God has done his part. We must do Let me ask you. Come on up here, accompanist. Let's get ready to sing. Come on up. I want these people to know they're going to get out of here. <laughs> well, let me ask you. Go ahead and start playing real softly. Are you doing your part in prayer? This congregation has been here 102 years. Brother Brandon said something about it being here another 102 years. I want to ask who's putting it in the hands of God to keep it here. Are you doing your part? Are you doing your part to give? not just to keep the doors of this building open, but to spread the gospel of Christ around the world. Amen. To meet the needs of the hungry, the hurting, the lonely, the lost. Amen. Or are you more concerned about getting bigger houses and more boats and bigger cars? Are you doing your part when it comes to giving? How about are you doing your part? when it comes to encouraging those who are down. And we heard about this new Christian, four weeks if I heard Brother Dennis right, 
broken her arm horribly. She needs to know that every brother and sister in Christ in her congregation loves her and is lifting her to God and that the, we care that she hurts and we want her well. Are you doing your part? How about that person that lost a loved one? I've been there. If you've not been there, I can't tell you what it's like to sit and look across the table at an empty chair. There just aren't any words to describe it. Oh, how we need somebody just to come and wrap their arm around us sometimes. say I love you I think about you are you doing your part and how about this Jesus himself said unless you believe I'm he you'll die in your sins have you done your part he said except you repent you will perish Jesus said, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Amen. God's done his part. How about you? It's decision time. It's decision time for you to decide if you're going to do your part. It's invitation time from God because he has done his part. What are you going to do? Will you come to Christ? Let's stand. Let's stand. quitting time I was I was thought we was just getting started I could listen to that all night Curry was talking about the music ministered to him this words ministered to me hasn't it you to know how much that God has done for us and sometimes how unthankful we are ungrateful we are lack of response to what he's done in our giving not in the offering plate but there's a lot more that we can give besides in the offering I believe the scripture says the Christians in the first century gave themselves first to the Lord are we doing our part I know there's a lot more that I need to do how about you? Well, let's start tonight. From this day forward, that we'll start doing what we can for the Lord. Forget about those things that are behind. 
Let's keep pressing forward to the Lord. Listen to the words of our invitation. I gave my life for you. What have you given for me? That was the whole message, wasn't it? In the invitation hymn. Let's sing that last verse. Maybe there's someone that needs to step out and walk down this aisle right now. Rededicate their life or someone that's not a Christian. Give your life to the Lord. He's already done his part. He's waiting for you to come and do yours. Will you come as we sing? else we can do today there's a lot we can do on the way home in prayer and thankfulness and just thinking about his greatness and what he does for us Amen. go to bed tonight with a grateful and thankful heart Amen. for what he's done and what he's allowed us to become through his son the Lord Jesus we ask brother Frank Crumb to dismiss us in prayer and Thank you guys for coming to sing. And, uh, you be sure and come by and let Curry hum, know how much you appreciated the message tonight. We're glad you're here, Curry, and I can't wait till tomorrow night. The uh, only thing that did excite me more is the Lord come back tomorrow. Amen. Uh, so uh, we're, we're looking forward to tomorrow night if the Lord tarries his coming. Uh, be challenged and lifted up and undergirded with God's grace and mercy and love and his, his work. Brother Frank, you dismiss us. Father, how much better would we be, your children, if you would come back tonight? Tomorrow, take us to be with you, to live through the eons of eternity. We understand that when you come, we'll be time. You stress to us in your word that as long as you stay away and we're here, uh, that we need to do our part because you've already done yours. We're thankful for that message tonight from our preacher, Brother Al. We pray your blessing on him wherever he goes. He might continue to tell the sweet story of how much you loved us by sending your dear sweet son our way. Bless Dennis. Church here, may they continue to be the light sitting on the side of the hill here as they've been for the last 102 years. Bless all of those that are sick tonight. Many would be here, love to be here when you get on. Strength us all to serve you more. Forgive us our failings to you. There are too many. We don't have any right to fail you at all. But yet we do, and we ask you to forgive us. Dismiss us. Keep us safe. Bless us to do whatever we do in your name. For it's in your name I pray. Amen. Amen.